I still can't. I knew we were missing somebody. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, Mary Jo, can I have the roll call, please? Nicole Pavoris. Jason Blake. Here. Amy Blazier. Here. Steve Kiefer. Here. Ron Ludwig. Here. Stephanie Macro. Here. Dave Seacrest. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you, Mary Jo. All right, board, let's look at the approval of minutes, and I will need a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Have a first, I have a second. Uh, Mary Jo, roll call, per please. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mrs. Blazier? Yes. Mr. Kiefer? Yes. Mr. Ludwig? Yep. Mrs. Macro? Yes. Mrs. Pavoris? Mr. Seacrest? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to the report of the Director of Communication. Shannon, you are on stage. Good evening, board. We are very excited to welcome the Crystal Lake Central cheerleaders who placed third at the recent state competition and they were in the 2A division. I'm gonna invite forward coach Alexa Criticos to talk a little bit about the season and about the state competition as well. Hello everybody, my name is Alexa Kritikos and I have the privilege of being the head cheerleading coach here at Crystal Lake Central High School. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the entire cheerleading program and thanking you for our recognition today. Um, it is always an honor to share our journey with everybody and um, to help bring everyone together to celebrate our accomplishments. And I'm thrilled to share a team so close to my heart, the um, Crystal Lake Central cheerleading team. Uh, these incredible young women who are composed of seven seniors, three juniors, five sophomores, and two freshmen have achieved something truly remarkable by ranking third in the IHSA state cheerleading competition um, two weeks ago in February. Our Tigers had a pretty incredible season. We had um, two first place finishes at local invitationals. We had a third place finish at the Fox Valley Conference and a second place finish at the IHSA sectional. Uh, followed by, of course, walking the podium to receive our third place trophy in state. Um, but beyond the accolades, their journey is a true testament to the values we hold dear as a school and community. I've had the privilege of witnessing the dedication and hard work these student athletes have poured into their craft. I've been a part of many late night practices and ver very many early morning routines, and they've committed themselves wholeheartedly, not just as athletes, but as students and community members. In addition to our third place finish, I am proud to say that they hold a cumulative 3.6 average GPA and have participated in numerous community um, outreach programs throughout Crystal Lake. Um, but what truly sets them apart is their embodiment of Tiger Pride. They are not just athletes, they're ambassadors of positivity and unity. They cheer at every home and away game, rallying our crowds and promoting positive sportsmanship. They've done the same within our own small little family we have and shown that true success isn't about winning competitions, but rather about creating a bond so strong that the crowd is forced to feel it no matter where we go. And this team was able to take all the energy from these four walls here and show all of Illinois what Crystal Lake Central is made of. Beyond every, or behind every successful team are the dedicated teachers, school staff, supportive families, and a community that believes in their potential. So to, as we celebrate their achievement tonight, we truly want to take this moment to importantly Thank those who have stood by us every step of the way, so thank you. And to our incredible team, your journey has added to the legacy of the Crystal Lake Central Cheerleading Program, something created years ago and that you have continued. Your hard work, perseverance, and genuine passion for what you do reminds us of what greatness can happen when we come together. And our seniors are going to share just their future plans. Hi, my name is Alexa Agostados, and I plan to study pre-med at the University of Iowa to become a dermatologist. Ooh. 
Hi, my name is Carly Mata. Um, I plan to study marketing at the University of Iowa or at the University of Arizona. <laughs> Hi, my name is Samantha Nitty, and I'm going to be majoring in nursing either at Ole Miss or Kentucky University. Hi, my name is Anna Auksher, and I plan to study communications at Illinois State. Hi, my name is Haley Schmidtkamp, and I will be going to MCC and starting a physical therapy program. Well, but the one thing I love about our athletic teams in 155, and I had a discussion with our former superintendent years ago about serving, and almost all of our sports teams, I love to hear that the coach and the athletes take it upon themselves to find some serve during the season. So thank you for giving that gift to the girls. Okay, Shan. Thank you so much. I did hear a communications major future, so we're always looking for interns in the communications department. That's my shameless plug for this evening. Um, summer interns. Summer interns, that's right. Uh, next up on the agenda is our FOIA report. We received four FOIAs in the last month. Those are listed on tonight's agenda. All responsive documents are in the public board packet, which is available on the district's website. Are there any questions from the board on the FOIAs we received? I think Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up on the agenda, Dr. Earn, you're going to give us a presentation? Yes. I Thank you. I highly encourage you guys just so I bore you, you can leave for the evening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, ladies. Thank you. I like how they answer it. <coughs> What's that? Like all in unison when they answer no, it. No, I never got it. <laughs> Hey, you got it. Got to be together. Yes. I wanted to ask, did anybody get dropped in the final competition? Because that usually that usually takes you out of the medal. Right. So I'm guessing they didn't drop anybody. All right, good evening board and welcome to Crystal Lake Central High School. Um, kind of a bittersweet for me here. As you know, tonight uh, is my last board presentation and uh, I'm retiring at the end of the year and I do want to give a sincere, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, thank you to the Board of Education for all of your support during my tenure as the principal at Crystal Lake Central. It was amazing. It has been amazing, not only this board and prior boards. Um, without your support, we would not be able to talk about the programming we're going to talk about tonight, which is the Coding Academy at Crystal Lake Central High School. Um, tonight, you're going to hear a little bit about the history of computer science and the Coding Academy at Crystal Lake Central High School. The vision, Steve Olson, Bob Hewitt, myself, and Kim Bromley 
all put together over the years. Um, we're going to talk about student involvement, and you'll see the progression there. Talk about the room, the donations. Um, talk about the current course sequence and what courses kids take to get dual credit and how they uh, it makes them viable for employment. Also, Bob is going to talk about employment opportunities, kind of our why, why we want this kind of programming for our students, not only for their dual credit, but also so we can employ people within our county. In addition to that, we're going to talk about our partnerships and dual credit. We're going to talk about, and you're going to hear student testimonies, and you're going to hear some of our students talk about the apps they have developed over time. And then last but not least, Bob's going to conclude the presentation and talk about um, the current and future forecasting for the program. Um, here, this is a quick slide, but I do want to take a minute to show you the progression that in 2013-14, we had two sections, which was four, uh, 60 students involved in two AP courses for computer science. Um, back then, students were doing coding in a hardwired computer. Um, as you can see, and I'll go down uh, through the progression here, but to this current school year, we currently have eight sections of students in some type of computer science, some type of coding. Um, those students, that is about 180 students that are now exposed to computer programming in some way, shape, or form. In addition to that, you can see uh, the room itself where you had your committee meeting tonight. Um, that room serves a dual purpose. Most of the courses in there taught our computer science and programming, but in addition to that, we host our business incubator course in there. The really cool thing about that is that sometimes our students in their business incubator pitch want to develop an app, and they work cross-curricular with our students in computer science. Sometimes the student is enrolled in both courses, but other times they're just enrolled in the business incubator and they have to go to the computer science courses, the app development course to develop that, and it's a really cool thing to see, and they work collaboratively together. Last but not least, board, again, without your support financially for that room, um, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention the people on the wall in there for their donations to the room. Um, there was uh, six uh, individuals, six partnerships there, not individuals, six partnerships with people that helped us build that room, and. Um, it just shows you the great community that we're a part of, not only in Crystal Lake, but McHenry County, okay? With that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Hewitt, our uh, Industry Careers and Wellness Division leader, and I'm gonna let Bob talk about course sequencing and a little bit more. Um, I, I do wanna echo uh, Dr. Earns, uh, thanking you for all your support uh, for this program. I remember when um, Kevin Keppen and I went to uh, Barrington to hear about the incubator program, and they had mentioned this other side uh, program they're starting called Mobile Makers, which was an app development. And we walked out of that meeting, and Kevin was really hyped on the incubator program. And I said, man, I want that mobile apps program is what I want. Because um, I saw the two working together. So we brought in Mobile Makers. We kind of got a, a special deal from uh, the program since we were bringing in both. Uh, but um, then at a meeting with Dan Bertrand, um, uh, with, with MCC, they had MCC mentioned they were starting a, a mobile apps iOS program. So I was started working with MCC to see what the, we would, if we could get dual credit for these classes. Um, and through negotiations and changing the program and, and, and leaving the mobile makers and can divide kind of developing our own program, we were able to get the dual credit. Not only that, but um, when they take the advanced class, they actually get two classes at MCC. So with the, the computer science A, which you see is on level two, with the dual credit advanced mobile apps, which is on level three, they actually can go to MCC and just need to get three classes at MCC to complete their certification in iOS development. So um, it's a really good deal uh, for the students. So like, as I mentioned, right now we have the mobile app development. Um, the AP Computer Science Principles, the AP Computer Science A, and the Dual Credit Mobile Apps. Um, but uh, I want to hear from the kids and, and what they're doing. I want to hear from Brian, so I will cut it short and uh, hand it over. Oh, did you want to talk about this too? 
Oh, yeah, I'm sure it should quickly, be. You want to quickly do that? So rehearsing is awesome. Yeah. Um, so, uh, the re you know, the reason I really like this program, too, and this is just, uh, you know, fairly recent information, but, you know, we want to keep our students in McHenry County um, when they leave and when they come up, you know, graduate from college or, or, or MCC and come back. But um, these are just some of the jobs and opportunities in McHenry ha County alone that are open uh, to students right now that they could walk out and, and fill these jobs. You, you look at these and, and, you know, they may not be complete app development, but, you know, the interest in computer science definitely will lead to this. And there's a lot of, lot of jobs there. And you can see the anticipated growth for McHenry County uh, in the future. Um, anyway, I, I think it's an interesting slide. I'm sure you'll have a copy of this. But I, there is a lot of opportunity for our students uh, to be employed within this county and live here and send their kids to a District 155 and, you know, really make the community thrive. All right. All right, uh, my name is Brian Seaver. I am the computer science, or one of the computer science teachers here. And uh, yeah, we've kind of just kind of gone through a bunch of things. We really want to just communicate today how, I don't know, the money, the time, the investment that a lot of people have made to this is paying off. Like it's not just something that's happening. So hopefully after we get done here, you hear from these kids and stuff like that, you realize that the tax dollars that we're using to make this happen is actually producing something really cool. So uh, I'd like to thank Bob again. He just kind of talked about it very nonchalantly, but to get this program started, this dual credit program started, it took a lot of work and the commitment. Uh, so he, does, he did a great job communicating with both MCC and myself, uh, trying to figure out what it is that we needed to do to get this here. So my journey was in order to, for us to offer dual credit, I had to get certified by MCC. So I had to take three classes at MCC and they said I had to produce an app to be con considered industry proven. So throughout that time, I took those three courses and produced, I have like three or four apps that are on the app store right now. If you would like to purchase them, that would be great. <laughs> they're, not, they're not going so well. Um, no, they have been used, but it has given me that opportunity that I teach kids trying to produce something that I have gone through that exact same process from beginning up with an idea to producing it uh, and then getting it on the app store and dealing with those situations. So it's been a, it's been a really cool experience. Uh, all right, to start the dual credit program, we gotta get it started somehow. So the first year, we got five kids. We well, can't run a class with five kids, so we gotta figure this out. Well, really, we have 10 kids, but they can't all take it the same period. So what happened that year, we had 10 students, but we had to offer it during two different class periods. So five in one class, five in another, and we had to stack it on top of another class. So CSA and this ran at the same time. And if you look at that year, 2020, 2021, I hope you know what happened during that time as well. We were completely remote at that time too. So we were stacking a class, AP Computer Science A, along with this advanced mobile app development, trying to get it off the ground somehow. Uh, and after that, it, it survived. After that, uh, we then had 12 students the next year. We had 15 students the following year where we got five students from Prairie Ridge. So other schools started sending some kids over and currently we have 21 students in the class. It's thriving. Uh, the kids are producing some really cool things. And the only reason why I mention that is that I realized from our administration it takes a commitment to try to like, we gotta get something started here. It's not gonna start with 20 kids and maybe not gonna start with 30 kids, uh, but the, it, has, it has gained some traction over the years. So we appreciate that. Uh, student success, a lot of the kids have gone on to continue at MCC, but a lot of them has also gone on to four-year universities, and you'll hear from some of those stories tonight. All right, I, I don't have a lot of time. I gotta quickly go through this. All right, student developed apps. So I have five students here. Uh, some of them have developed some really cool apps. Others have other experiences that they wanna talk about. But so many kids have had an opportunity to be able to create an app, like something that is theirs on an iPhone, ready to go. Uh, and the district has purchased a, um, a license from Apple for us to be able to get things all the way through their process, to not necessarily put it on the App Store, but get it all the way through that process. So we have been able to send it out to 10,000 people if we want, get feedback from them. So that whole process has been made possible because the district was able to spend some money and allow us to have a district license, which was awesome. Um, there are three apps up there that have gone all the way to production. Map app is a school app that uh, started in computer science principles. Kids had an idea like kids are lost, freshmen are lost when they come to the school. I wish there was an app. So kids started developing this app. It took about a three year process over multiple courses where everybody building on each other. But now we currently have a, both an Android version and an iOS, ver sorry, a JavaScript version and an iOS version that uh, students can put in their schedule and it will show pins in the map of where their class is in the school. Parents can use it on parents' night if they want to say, hey, here's my kid's schedule, where are their classes at? It'll put pins in the map for them as well. 
It's a really cool feature that the kids put together based on a problem. Uh, student selection app, we had a student, Paige Keller. I don't know if that rings a bell to you, but she was an awesome basketball player here as well. Uh, she went on to major in computer science, but here in high school, she developed a student selection app. She was the first student ever to produce an app on the App Store for us at Chris Lake Central, which is really cool. And it came from an idea of a teacher, just I need an app that can randomly select students and keep track of who's, what students were created. She goes, I, th I think I can do that. And she used all of her skills and got to produce it, got to get it on the App Store. It was a fun process for her. Just an awesome experience. Uh, currently, Carl is in the room, and he's going to talk about that in a little bit here. But we had the, our dean of our deans were like our administration was like all the buses show up in the bus circle. They're all in a different order every day. Kids run outside and they're like, "Where's my bus? Where's 415? Where's 408?" They're in different orders every day. They're like, "How do I find my bus?" Well, I wish there was an app that the administration, as they were sitting out there, could just put the buses in the right order as they pull in. Kids could have it on an app and be able to see that. So Carl has been working on that app. So that was a problem that was presented to him, and he is currently working with our deans trying to perfect that to get that done as well. Um, Dr. Aaron talked about the business incubator app. So we have this business incubator class. Some of them decide that they want to produce an app. Uh, so then they, they talk to us, and I have a few students then do at least the UI for them. It's very hard to do some of the, the craziness that they want to get done, but they at least be able to talk to them and create a user interface of an app that they are trying to create. So they get to have that client experience. They meet with them. They say, what do they want? It's just another really, really awesome experience, and there are a lot of ads that have been presented that way as well. How am I doing? Here we go. All right. Crazy amount of opportunities. And, that's what, and then these are just some of them, but the Coding Academy has created partnerships in the area that has created so many opportunities for kids that kids that entered with promise, like, I don't know what I want to do, and left with some serious purpose. So FWE, a local company actually based out of Tennessee, but also has done some stuff here, food warming equipment. Over the last 10 to 12 years, we've had at least a student a year. Uh, it's been off the last two or three, but has done an internship there. Uh, we have three students that, that I wanted to highlight just their multiple paths. So Jacob Seegers was a student that uh, got an internship there, decided once he graduated high school, he went to the University of Illinois, uh, graduated with a major in computer science, and then FWE hired him right out, of high, or right out of college. And they said, we'll hire you back. And he was full time there. The next student, Aiden Law, uh, in high school, was, got an internship there. So in high school, he was a senior. He worked there um, during the school year and then didn't have enough money to go to a four-year university. He said, I'm just going to go to MCC. They said, all right, we'll hire you. We'll keep you on part time. So he was able to work in the business world and pursue a degree at MCC at the exact same time and eventually did continue on in the, in the field. And the third person, John Lee, is the craziest story of all time. So he internship there, same thing, walked in and said, I, I, I guess I got this internship, didn't really know anything about it, um, didn't have enough money to go to college at all. They said, you know what, we'll hire you full time right out of high school. So after his internship, they hired him full time. They said, well, you don't even need to go to college. We'll take you just the way you are. Uh, within two years, he went on to become the manager of that IT department uh, without ever going to college. So I was going to read a quote, because I asked him to come here, but he didn't want to fly from Tennessee. So uh, this is a big meeting, but he didn't come in from Tennessee. But here we go. <laughs> Um, I asked him, can you just give me a quote about what the computer science department meant to you? He said, the computer science program has made a si significant impact on my career development. My introduction to computer science at CLC sparked my passion for software development and solidified my decision to pursue it as a career path. Through the program, I was given the opportunity to connect with a real world company, leading to my senior year internship as an application developer. Fast forward six years and that internship has become a stable and fulfilling management career without requiring me to spend time and money at college. The CLC computer science program has been instrumental in helping me discover my passion and kickstart my professional journey. So that was John and that's just a, it's just a crazy awesome story. And that's one, that's one, we got one. Um, the MSOE programming competition we get to go to every year. Teams of four get to go and these, these kids will talk about that a little bit. We've had a couple championships this year we got third. Uh, Grubhub Day was an opportunity that they, uh, a senator asked for some students to be able to go down to Grubhub and just check out both the business and the computer science part of that, and we'll have Ava talk about that a little bit. ComEd Rally, ComEd uh, Girls in STEM, right? Is that right? They were offering some opportunities. They're going to talk about their experiences with that. That was just, hey, let's try this. Uh, Code Ninjas, Andrew Kaiser is a student, and really, um, he works at Code Ninjas, but Andrew is a really cool story. Um, Dr. and talked about all the different levels that we have in computer science. So Andrew is one of our AVID students. Uh, so he started out as a freshman taking mobile app development, 
which is our first course. Then he said, oh, I gained a little confidence, took computer science principles, gained some more time, confidence. Now decided to take computer science A, which is a crazy hard course, did awesome in that, and is now currently in advanced mobile app development. If we did not have that sequence, he probably would have never tried to just jump right into it. So just an, just an awesome uh, story. And now he has a job at Code Ninjas. He couldn't be here tonight. Um, Matthew's company is a local company that reached out to me and said, hey, do you have some kids that might be able to work on an app? We have a web-based version of this. We want to see if they can work it. Roy is currently working with them, and he's going to talk about that. And then we have, I have teaching assistants that just have this opportunity to communicate their knowledge. Now that they have everything, can they communicate it to somebody else? So Carl, Roy, Natalie, and Ella's not here tonight are all teaching assistants in my class where they have to communicate with my students. But those are crazy amount of opportunities, in my opinion, that are just offered because of a little room that was built down the, down the road here that says, hey, let's put a collaborative space together. And that was, again, Bob Hewitt. Let's put a collaborative space together, allow kids to start working on something and see what they can do. So. I would love each one of these students to just quickly introduce themselves and a little bit about what the computer science program has meant to them. Does that work for everyone? Is, that, is it, we good with that? Okay, let's do that. Roy, come on up here. I know I talked to you. <coughs> good afternoon. My name is Roy Alame. Please excuse my voice. Um, I am a senior at Crystal Lake Central this year. Um, as Mr. Siever mentioned, I am a teacher assistant for computer science A. Uh, I'll begin by talking about the MSOE programming competition. So, uh, you know, the bullet points up there, teams of four, two championships. Um, there's 10 point, 20 point, 40 point problems. Uh, the best way to characterize them is they range in difficulty from difficult to extremely difficult. Um, none of those problems are easy, so it's a really humbling experience overall. And it's a really good um, opportunity to see how um, complicated computer science can be. So I really enjoyed that. Um, me and Carl were part of the team that uh, placed third in the overall competition this year. So we're very happy with that. Um, now the next thing I'd like to talk about is Matthew's company. Um, I've been working on, so as Mr. Siever mentioned, this is a, I, I don't think he said this, but this is a drain dryer organization, like a drain grind, dr grain dryer <laughs> producing organization. So these are very, very um, big, expensive machines, and they need a way to access them, um, monitor information about them as well. Um, so they wanted to move their website to iOS or as an app, so I've been working on that. I've learned uh, Swift UI to get that going. Um, so far, I've given them uh, two models, uh, so they're looking through it. They're going to get back with me soon, but it is an ongoing process. Nothing really too official yet. Um, the last thing I want to say is that the uh, program here at Central has solidified my interest in computer science, um, and I am fairly certain that I'm going to be studying it uh, at the University of Urbana-Champaign this fall. All right, thank you. Hello all, my name is Carl Show, and as Siever mentioned, I am presently working on the bus application. Um, I've been working on it f for roughly four months now, and so far it's been a very nice experience, getting some real world application for what I've been learning in computer science, and it's, it's great having this opportunity to do so, <laughs> pardon me. Um, beyond that, I am a senior uh, and I am committed to taking computer science in college. Hi, um, my name is Eva Knopfs and I'm a junior and last year I took computer science principles and this year I'm currently in computer science A. And I actually started out in project lead the way freshman year, but taking computer science program, like classes through the program has actually helped me realize that that's what I'm more interested in. Um, I participated in the ComEd EV rally over the summer and it gave me a really great opportunity to talk to other girls my age and work with them to build an electric vehicle and then eventually race it at the Museum of Science and Industry. 
which was really cool. I actually used a lot of the programming skills that I learned here in the competition where I got like problems to solve that were the results of a coding project or something like that. And yeah, it's been really great to be able to collaborate with other people at this school with, um, with computer science. And it's really definitely helped me realize that that's what I'm interested in doing in college in the next couple years. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ava Schmidt. I'm a junior here, and I've taken mobile app development and also AP Computer Science A. I'm also a member of our school's computer science club. Um, I was an attendee at the Grubhub Day in Chicago, and I got to meet with a lot of higher-ups with the company, and we worked in different groups with different students from all over the place to come up with solutions for their company. And I was exposed to a lot of great um, office, like workplace environment there. And I was also a, um, a participant in the ComEd EV rally. And I've got so, man so many opportunities through ComEd, and that's all thanks to Mr. Siever for sharing that with me my, hmm, I think, freshman year. And I don't, Honestly, it's been such a great opportunity, and I'm forever thankful for this program. And yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Natalie Duchesne. I'm a senior here at Central. And my freshman year, I was pretty dead set on being an engineer. It was going to be like chemical engineering, but um, I learned that you had to use a lot of physics in engineering, and that didn't really jive with me. Uh, but I was still pretty dead set on being in some form of STEM field, so I tried out computer science principles my sophomore year, and luckily that was a much better fit. Um, now, three years later, after pretty much knowing nothing about computer science my sophomore year, I have gone to MSOE for two years, I was a part of the Comet EV rally this past summer, and I am a TA, a teaching assistant uh, in our computer science A class. Uh, like many of you guys probably know, uh, teaching and learning something is very two very different parts of education. And teaching has really been able to solidify my passion for this field, being able to show another person who might not understand something how to do computer science, which is something I'm now very passionate about. Uh, it's just taught me that it's a field that it, uh, will allow me to do whatever I want in my future even though like, if my passions may change, I'll be able to still pursue computer science. And I would have never been able to know that without our program here. Um, yeah, and my plan for next year is to either go to U of I or UNC Chapel Hill for computer science. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I just thank you for you guys for showing up and just sharing your testimonies about things. I have lots of other things, but they're 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 hooking me off of this thing. But uh, I just think that the the opportunities that these kids have been presented with based on this program is awesome. And I ask that you just continue to support things like this. It's great for our community. So thank you. What prompted the three of you to go that direction last year for your first computer class? Why? Um, well, I started out with hybrid mentoring. Okay. Yeah, you did say that. Okay. I um, work with the Prairie Ridge uh, incubators, so I know that program very well, and I don't know this one very well, but I'm glad to hear that it's in, uh, increasing in numbers. I'd like to see 42 rather than 21, but um, you mentioned you're able to bring students that maybe don't have it at their school here. Is that right? either at the beginning, the zero hour at the end of the day kind of thing. And that's wonderful that we're able to do that. But 
the evil side of me says, we need this in all four of our schools. We need incubator in all four of our schools because when you put that thing up there about the money, that's reality. That's reality. I'm not making a knock on mass science and all the other things, but you guys show these kids reality of where they could be and what they could do and how much they could make. So thank you. Um, I'm just going to wrap up quickly here, but I, I do want to say that we can pump money and equipment and uh, technology to this program, but if it wasn't for the teachers that we have leading this program, uh, Mr. Siever here, it, it's student, student magnet, and he's student just been an incredible teacher, and, and he's the right teacher for this program. So I think uh, he deserves a lot of thanks for everything he's done. For He's the one that's built this program. I just buy stuff, you know, that he needs. And I want to thank... Yeah, just yeah. a little, and I want to thank Trey um, and, and uh, the IT department at, at district office for uh, continuing uh, to support us in everything uh, that we do here. So in, in the future, um, we, we plan on expanding, uh, bringing, I know that um, PR is looking at Project Lead the Way Cybersecurity. We are also looking at that. Um, I've also talked to MCC a little bit about bringing in the dual credit web design, uh, which I think is going to be important on the future uh, too. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there. You know, Brian mentioned user interface and user experience. Uh, we've got a lot of untapped potential, I think, across the district with some of our uh, art and design kids who are amazing digital uh, manipulators and illustrators. Um, you know, AI can write code, but they can't design with a, you know, so um, we need kids, to, we need humans to do that. And I think there's a lot of potential with that too, what so. What can we do to get more kids in to the program? <sighs> I, you know, to be honest, I think it's just hard for kids to leave their home school to, uh, to go to a different school. Now, we do offer this program. I mean, at South um, has offered it as well. Cary Grove has people training, and it's just getting, getting the interest there. But uh, we'll get there. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to go on to uh, point number six here, uh, the strategic plan presentation. Thanks, Jason. I get to kick this one off. I'll let our central students adjourn here. So very excited, board, to present to you tonight the final edition of our strategic plan. Uh, before we do that, and I hand it over to these students here, I just have a few people I'd like to thank. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you as a board for supporting this process. In particular, Nicole Pavora served on our Portrait of a Graduate Committee, and then Stephanie Macro and Dave Seacrest both served on our Large Strategic Planning Committee as well. So thank you to those three for giving up their time. Additionally, on the Strategic Planning Committees, we had members of our community we had parents, students, as well as staff members, and so a huge thank you to all of the members of our various of our two committees that met frequently over the past few months. And then finally, um, those same stakeholder groups also were pivotal in responding to our surveys here in the fall, providing us feedback that allowed that guided our process and uh, really helped us to narrow down our search of what is it that District 155 needs to become to meet the needs of our students and our, our wider community. So. Thank you to all of those folks. I also want to thank Dr. Berkey here, who's been facilitating this process over the past few months. Uh, John has come in, done a great job of respecting the work that's been happening since our last plan in 2018, and really seeing the value of that work and really helping us to retain some of those objectives, but also pivot to meet the increasingly diverse needs and evolving needs of our kids. Um, I want to make sure I thank Shannon our Director of Communications. Shannon was behind the scenes handling all of the logistics with the strategic plan from the presentations like the one you'll see tonight to inviting our guests to making sure that we had what we needed, supplies, the communications that went out to all of our community. Shannon was a part of all of that, so none of this could have happened without her. And uh, finally, I wanna thank our students. So as we all know, District 155 is all about doing what's best for our students. And one of our main values here with this plan was to involve them at a really deep level. And so we had a number of students from each of our schools as a part of the Portrait of a Graduate Committee as well as the large committee that we put together. And four of them are here with us tonight. So from left to right, I wanna thank uh, Brady Seberg, Addison Gertz, Sierra Van Jacobs, and Vincent Riccardi for being here with us tonight. We also invited, uh, we had Drew Welder, but he has basketball tonight. 
And then we also invited Maya Mendez, but she had musical rehearsal. So I want to thank the four students here that will be presenting the final edition of our, our new strategic plan here for District 155. So I'll hand it over to John and the crew here. Thank you. And actually, uh, Shannon, speaking of logistics. Oh, there we go. Thank you. We need the clicker. We got it. Thanks. Thank you so much. So uh, just to give you a little bit of an overview, again, it's hard to believe, but it was, uh, it was all the way back in August when I was sitting here when we were talking about what we were going to do over the next uh, five months. And well, here we are. The five months is up, and we are bringing you a product tonight. And it is so exciting to see this work come to this stage. And I say this stage because it's not over. It's really only just beginning. And we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, these are just some high-level points of reminder about what the purpose of the strategic plan is. It's a, a guiding document for the district for the next five years. It is a guiding document. It is not laced with specifics of this is going to happen on this day or even in this year. It is, and I use the analogy of the U.S. Constitution, it's a guiding document that the district will use to annually make more specific goals and measures. And so, as I said, this is just one phase in the process tonight. You're going to be hearing about this plan ongoing as a regular part of your work over the next five years. It's not like uh, we're just going to come back in five years and let you know how it went. So you're going to be you're going to be very much a part of this. The whole district will be very much a part of this throughout the uh, throughout the next five years. So I, I do want to add uh, another few words about the students. And Dr. Lasinski mentioned this, but the reason they're here tonight to present the plan to you is because this is for them. This is for the students in the district, but also this plan was a big part created by them. And so they really were not just like window dressing, we've got a few students that are gonna look good, they really were an integral part of putting this plan together. And I wanna tell you one story that illustrates that. At one of our last meetings, we were having an, a, an adult debate, I will say, a debate among adults about a term. And we were trying to, and that was when it gets tough, when you get down to the end and you're trying to narrow things down. And we actually had some poster boards along the walls and everybody had dots and I had people voting and we were trying to kind of get to where we, where we thought we were gonna land. Well, in this one particular term, the voting comes out, when you know it, almost 50-50. And one of, one of the adult observers said, you know, I think, I think more of the students voted for that one term than the other one. And I, th I thought that was a great observation. So I actually just at random went over to Vince, uh, Vince's table and uh, said, Vince, did, which, which way did you vote? And he, he told us. And I said, could you explain why? And off the cuff, ad-libbed with no preparation, he like gave this phenomenal explanation for why he chose what he did. And so then I went to another student and I said, what about you? Yeah, same word and here's why I... So I had several other students that did the, did the very same thing. Before that was over, there was no more adult debate. The adults were like, yeah, no, we, we, know, we know what the term should be. Because the students had not only chosen it, but they had so well articulated why. The, the why behind it. So that happened, things like that happened throughout the process. There was a student at every table, so they were very involved in it. But I want to tell you that one story because uh, the adults really did back up and listen to them in a, in a major way. And they did a phenomenal job at, uh, at advocating for themselves and their fellow students. But I would even say, more importantly, the students that aren't here yet, because this plan is going to affect students that aren't even 155 students yet. So the timeline, um, we actually, our very first meeting was in August. It was an administrative retreat where we actually did a SWOT analysis of the district. And that meeting actually happened in this very room in, uh, in very early August. And then as we got to September, that's when the meeting started. We started, uh, we had two teams. The first was the portrait of a graduate team. And that actually started first. And then the strategic plan team uh, started overlapping it. But the, the portrait of a graduate work got done very early in early October, and then the strategic plan met for uh, uh, over a period of time up until our, our final meeting last month. And you'll see a little bit more about that timeline as we, uh, as we go on. 
So with that, uh, we're going to start with the portrait of a graduate, and we're going to present that to you, and then we will get into the actual strategic plan. And as I said, we're going to have the students present this whole thing to you. And uh, Addison is actually our representative here tonight who was on the portrait of a graduate team. So she's going to talk to you now, start to talk to you a little bit about what the meetings were like, the process, and then she's going to uh, go through the portrait of a graduate terms. So Addison, it's all yours. Um, thank you. Yes, as he said, my name is Addison, and I'm a senior at Prairie Ridge, and I was a member of the Portrait of a Graduate. We had three meetings over the course of a month, and the committee contained multiple other students that I got to meet from the other districts, as well as teachers and other faculty members from the other districts. And we worked and collaborated through multiple team-building activities to kind of shape a vision for graduates like myself and the ones coming after me and just to make us not just great students, but great human beings. Like, what is life gonna look like for us outside of our Crystal Lake High Schools? And to me, that was the most important part and why I was totally on board for this project. Um, so we came up with five main points for the Portrait of a Graduate that we really wanted to focus on, and I'm going to read them to you. Uh, the first is citizenship. Our graduates will demonstrate an understanding of global cultures, lead with integrity, embrace diversity, to foster an inclusive environment and act in the best interests of others. And then we have communication. Our graduates will be active listeners and will effectively and respectfully express thoughts and ideas using oral, written, and nonverbal skills. We then have critical thinking. Our graduates will analyze and evaluate information with an open mind and find creative solutions to overcome complex challenges. We also have perseverance. Our graduates will adapt to situations overcome obstacles, and embody resiliency to achieve goals. And then the last but not least is empathy. Our graduates will demonstrate kindness, compassion, and respect while recognizing the perspectives and feelings of others. Thank you. Thank you, Addison. And I just want to add, and this is true of all the strategic plan uh, things you're going to see as well in a little bit, this is looks like a short document. It all fits on one, uh, one slide. All, every word on here was very carefully chosen. And a lot of work went behind getting to what is on there. And so uh, the team debated, worked on things. We also sent surveys out to the staff, the community that, was, that were able to give input on drafts of this. So I just want you to know that, that uh, while it looks, uh, looks relatively brief, it is uh, incredibly well-chosen words. And as you as you probably know, the uh, easiest thing to do is to just write a lot and then you don't have to uh, you don't have to cut back. And uh, this this work of cutting it down to this is was the challenging part and the team uh, the team did a great job with that. So next we're going to now focus on the actual strategic plan team uh, in their work itself. And to kick us off to talk about uh, how their meetings went and their process, and then he's going to actually do the first uh, the first thing is uh, Brady. Thank you, Dr. Berkey. Uh, my name is Brady Seberg. I'm a senior at Cary Grove, and uh, we met six times from uh, September through January, and this was a group of about 50 people, teachers, administrators, students, parents, uh, community leaders, uh, just a lot of different stakeholders. Uh, Mrs. Macro was at my table a couple of times, and I got to we got to discuss a lot of stuff about um, uh, the five different goals, which uh, we are going to cover in these next few slides. So one of the first of those would be um, the vision statement for the district, and this vision statement was the result of the strategic planning team breaking off into several smaller groups and trying to picture how we saw our district and what we saw it becoming over the course of the next five years and beyond that. And then we took this picture from all these different groups and tried to sum it back down into a single sentence, which became to be a destination district that provides each student a world-class education within an engaged and supportive community. Thank you, Vince. And then uh, for the values, let me introduce uh, Sierra. Hello, my name is Sierra Van Jacobs, and I am a senior at Prairie Ridge High School. Um, throughout the six meetings, there were five descriptors that we were able to come up with that we believe that the district will execute very well. The first, we have innovation. We are able to generate new ideas to implement positive change and value, overcoming challenges to achieve solutions. 
Next, we have relationships. We foster relationships among students, staff, families, and the community that ensure effective communication, collaboration, voice, and choice to further our mission, vision, core values, and goals. Community, we provide safe and nurturing cultures for students, staff, and stakeholders to feel a sense of belonging and build connections that value trust, integrity, and respect. Next, we have growth. We are able to encourage academic and personal progress by actively learning and adapting, embracing new challenges, and accepting mistakes as opportunities for improvement. Lastly, we have diversity. We're able to value and promote inclusion and acceptance of all students, staff, and families in our school community. So the next big, the next big part of the plan are the actual goals. And this is like the meat of what is going to happen. And as I said earlier on, these goals are, are somewhat specific, but not so specific that they can't, uh, you can't develop annual changes and, and more specificity each year. But again, they're part of the road map. And so we're going to go through each of those. There's five of them. And Brady is actually going to kick us off with, uh, uh, with the goals and do the first one. So Brady. So everyone has something they might want to see happen. And so our district administrators gave comprehensive, but not too comprehensive. We didn't have all day. <laughs> <laughs> comprehensive. Um, reports on uh, different, um, different aspects of our district. And we were able to assess our strengths and our weaknesses, and we were able to formulate five broader goals uh, about where we want to see our district move in the next five years. So the first of those was uh, student success. So we want to expand the available opportunities and enhance supports to close achievement gaps among students. We want to increase access to post-secondary opportunities, including dual credit coursework, and also make students more aware of potential career pathways. Increase student opportunities and flexibility in course selection. Increase student extracurricular awareness and engagement, including potentially exploring new activities, as well as educating students and families on existing activity offerings and exploring possible changes to the school day structure to increase, increase flexibility and better meet the needs of our students. Um, the second of these goals was to improve the students' well-being, and we were thinking of doing this by uh, using student well-being assessment data, developing baseline metrics and annual goals for student SEL targets, as well as evaluating current practices to ensure all students have equitable access to high-quality services, supports, and resources. We also want to develop and implement a district professional development plan for staff focused on student well-being and develop and implement a district plan to ensure students have adequate and equitable access to social emotional supports across the district. Next we have the workforce excellence and we will be doing this by developing and implementing a recruitment and retention plan to ensure high quality diverse staff along with increasing access to high quality professional development while incentivizing the pursuit of additional certifications to better meet evolving workforce needs and enhancing and innovating educational practices to meet changing student needs and learning styles. And lastly, provide opportunities for continual support and enhancement of staff well-being. The fourth set of goals were in community partnerships. This would include exploring the best methods to increase alumni engagement with the district, increasing family engagement with school and the student learning process, expanding our community partnerships to increase student in, uh, access and engagement and career opportunities within the community. Actually, today we just announced our micro-internships at, uh, at Cary Grove and I think at all of our schools, so that was a step in the right direction on the very first day of the strategic <laughs> plan. Um, continuing to build communication methods to reach all community staff and students, which includes translation services, and establishing mutually beneficial community partnerships to improve our extracurricular facilities as well as uh, access to other non-district local resources. And then our fifth and final goal was finance and facilities. And we believe that we should explore and implement alternative revenue sources, establish revenue sources to provide for the necessary building facility improvements, continue to improve the safety and security of district facilities, and create an education foundation to increase financial and community support for the district, as well as developing a five-year master facility plan 
that includes ex athletic, fine arts, and extracurricular facility maintenance, renovation, expansion, and construction. So we're gonna welcome questions in just a second, but before we, we get there, I just, I just think it's really worth giving our students a big round of applause. For, they did phenomenal, I thought. Like I said, they did great during the process, and I think these four students did phenomenal tonight sharing this with you and, and with the whole community. So again, I just wanna say this has been a joy to be a part of this process, and I, I think it has gone extremely well. There were over 75 people directly involved in the process, but then many more that were involved in auxiliary components of it. So I, I think you really did a good job of, a, of the district of making sure that you involved staff, community stakeholders, and I think this plan is really representative of the views of a lot of people of where the future of 155 should be. And I, I, I don't think I'm understating it to say I think the future is very, very bright for this district. And, and I think what's in this plan is a really exciting roadmap for moving forward. And as I said, the real work will begin tomorrow, assuming you approve the plan tonight, um, when uh, you know, the district starts to focus on the implementation. But I have, I have every, uh, every confidence that uh, this plan is gonna be implemented uh, in, a, in a very uh, strong way to truly take a very, very good district and just, and just continually make it better. And that's the exciting part of, of, of this work. So with that, um, I think we welcome any questions that uh, the board has. Or do you guys have any questions? I, I do have one question. Um, by the way, I, I very well thought out and um, the words you chose were very powerful uh, the way I read it. Um, so we, we approved this strategic plan in theory and um, how are we gonna measure that going forward to see our success and, and know where we're going with that? So what specifically um, will happen, at, at, at least I believe what, uh, you know, Dr. Lasinski's plan is, and I think the best, you know, a best, uh, a best process for moving forward is to actually take this plan and even for next year to have actual goals for the next school year. So for what's going to, be, believe it or not, 24, 25 already, you, the district will have goals that will be much more specific than what you saw here. So okay. for example, one, one of the last ones you saw was develop a master facility plan. Right. There was a lot of talk on the team about, uh, about various uh, physical aspects of the buildings needing upgrading and, and also some outside athletic areas. But the, the team didn't get into the work of the what or the when, but now that needs to happen. And so if you as a board approve this, you're giving the green light that yes, there needs to be a facility plan. And so in that one specifically, I think next year you will see a, a goal somewhat like there will be an actual team put together that will get into the detail of it. And then maybe by the end of 24, 25, you will actually have recommendations that come to the board. And then in 25, 26, you may start, you may see a goal for starting to do part of those things when you balance it with the funding available and all the other, all the other factors. And that'll happen with each, th each item on here. And so I think uh, procedurally, whether it'll be you know, July or August, I think you will see uh, actual goals come to you for approval and then the administrative team will bring them back to you at the end of the school year l with the metrics of how did we do in these goal areas, and then you'll repeat that that for the for the following year, where like if there's a certain goal area that the district is struggling or needs to pivot in, and that's going to happen. I mean, you know, when you did the last plan, nobody knew about COVID, <laughs> and you had to do a lot of pivoting during COVID. You know, hopefully we don't have another event of that magnitude, but things are going to happen. And so you will need to pivot, and the administration can 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 do that with each annual uh, with each annual set of goals, and then the metrics behind those goals. Thank you for clarifying that. And I would assume there'd be financial uh, targets too for that too, from you know, because some of the things that are on here have dollars attached to them. A lot of the things on here have dollars attached to them, and that would definitely be a part of any goal because. For you, when, when you talk about actually implementing, 
back to the facility example. If if there's a a goal to upgrade a field or to build a field house or do something that's a really uh, a, a big ticket item, obviously then you're going to have to debate and and weigh in on you know where is that money going to come from? Do we have it? And of course with resources, it's always a question of you know is the money more important here than somewhere else? I think what what's always good to keep in mind with the strategic plan is when you are developing your annual budget and you are spending money, always make sure it's focused on the strategic plan because this is this is your your roadmap. But yes, definitely um, everybody wants to see a lot happen in this plan. We we all do, but we also all know it won't all be financially uh, possible. And again, that's where we don't even know today what's going to be financially possible four years from now. So that's why we're going to have to be able to be flexible. I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Well, I appreciate you summarizing this directional strategy. I think it makes a lot of sense and gives us uh, a direction to head from a board standpoint. We look forward to the tactics from this strategy uh, from, from you guys. We appreciate your leadership on this. Thank you. No, it's been great to work with all of you. It's been a long time, and that's, it came off the way it was supposed to. And I'll just echo the thanks to the students. It was really great to hear all of your different perspectives and from the different schools. So you all had very insightful comments. So we appreciate that. OK, before we celebrate, we need to take a vote here. So may I please have a motion to approve the Community High School District 155 strategic plan as presented? So moved. Second. Motion. Second. Second. First from Stephanie, second from Amy. Can roll call? Mrs. Blazier? Yes. Mr. Kiefer? Yes. Mr. Ludwig? Yep. Mrs. Macro? Yes. Mrs. Bavoris? Mr. Seacrest? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Thank you for your time tonight. Students, congratulations to you. You have a proof plan. Thank you. Job well done. Okay, Guy, we'll give you a second to um, gather your things. Uh, we're going to move on to the public participation at Board of Education meetings and petitions to the board. Um, I have one form to speak tonight. Um, Joe Roberts, is there Joe Roberts here? We do not have a speaker tonight. They left already, so um, I'm sure it was awesome. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, the report of the Chief Officer of Finance and Operation, Dr. Warner. Good evening. That was a tough act to follow here, so bring it back down to reality, I guess. Um, while my report tonight's brief, I hope you'll find it as exciting as uh, we do with some of the information tonight. Um, first up, the Treasury report can be found on uh, page 82 of the Posted Board Packet. January's ending fund balance of $57.4 million uh, is up this month. The key drivers are CPPRT and interest earnings, which continue to exceed budgetary projections. The overall coverage ratio of 49% remains compliant with fund balance policy 420. Moving on, I'm seeking a motion to approve board bills in the amount $11.0 million, covering the period of January 10th through February 13th. The balance is further broken down between payroll-related items of $7.2 million, or 65%, and the remaining uh, $3.8 million, or 35% is for underpayments. May I please have a motion? Can I get a motion from the board to approve the bills as presented? So moved. First from Dave. Second. Second from Amy. Can I get a roll call, please? Mr. Kiefer? Yes. Mr. Ludwig? Yep. Mrs. Macro? Yes. Mrs. Pavoris? Mr. Seacrest? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mrs. Blazier? Yes. Finally, we're pleased to announce the receipt of official notice of state award, the grant application on behalf of TGA for over $1.1 million was approved to purchase to help purchase four electric school buses and the associated four charging stations. As funds need to be used by June 30th of 2026, we've already established a steering committee uh, to develop and implement a plan of success. I'd like to give a special thanks to Tracy Hodgson, uh, the director of TJA, Troy Stinger, the director of operations, and the TJA advisory board, including Mr. Seacrest and Dr. Lozinski for their support in making this opportunity reality. 
That concludes my report. Thank you, board. Thank you. Kevin deserves a great deal of the credit on this TGA grant. He spearheaded it from the beginning, and I won't say did some arm twisting, but he did some convincing of naysayers to get behind it. Thank you, Dave. And uh, per the strategic plan, I'm going to need to find some new revenue sources, so this is good <laughs> practice. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We have the report of the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Josh Nobilio. You are up. Thank you, Jason. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Board. Uh, as I mentioned uh, prior in committee, uh, my first item here for approval is the uh, request to hire six summer workers for this upcoming summer. Uh, those workers will be uh, one in each of the school buildings uh, and then one as a traveler and then one um, as a support in our communications office. And so tonight I'm just looking for your approval of those six positions. And this is something we do every year, I assume we it's not an incremental increase. Yes, okay. that's correct. Okay, can we get a motion uh, to... Okay, we got a motion from Ron. Uh, second? Second. And I'm just going to read the rest of the motion just so everyone's clear. Uh, can we have a motion to approve the hiring of the summer workers for 2024 as presented by Josh? So I have a motion and I have a second. Can I get roll call, please? Mr. Ludwig? Yep. Mrs. Macro? Yes. Mrs. Pavoris? Mr. Seacrest? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mrs. Blazier? Yes. Mr. Kiefer? Yes. Thank you, Board. Uh, the second item I need here is your uh, consent approval for items B, C, and D that are listed on the agenda this evening. So if I could get your approval of those, uh, that would be great. Okay. Can I get a motion for items B, C, and D? Approval of B, C, and D. Thank you, Dave. The first. Second. Second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't you have to excuse yourself from one of them? I, I will when we vote. Okay. All right. All right. I just was checking. Yeah, I just want to make I'm sure they're official here. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I have a first and a second. Roll call, please, man. Mrs. Macro? Yes. Mrs. Pavoris? Mr. Seacrest? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mrs. Blazier? Yes, but I abstain from D5. Mr. Kiefer? Yes. Mr. Ludwig? Yep. And One just to oh. clarify, that was Mary Jo. It wasn't Mary Ann. That was my bad. So. <laughs> One last thing, uh, we do have uh, Nick Lowe here uh, with us this evening. Um, Nick, uh, you just approved as a new um, division leader over at Prairie Ridge High School for Industry and Careers. Uh, Nick has been working uh, in Industry and Careers, and when you talk about uh, kid, kid magnets like we saw earlier today, uh, Nick is exactly that. He's a kid magnet. Uh, so we are uh, disappointed to be losing him for students uh, in the classroom, but uh, his expertise uh, leading the industrial tech division over at Prairie Ridge is going to be something that um, we are uh, thrilled to have uh, joining us. And so uh, if you get a moment uh, before you head out tonight, if you could just uh, uh, take a moment to say hi to Nick, uh, introduce yourself if you don't know him. Uh, again, Nick Lowe uh, joining us from Industry and Career. So thank you very much, Board. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to the report of Superintendent, uh, <coughs> Dr. Neal. Thank you, Jason. So this past month, District 155 hosted two large events, the Industry Partner Breakfast and the Healthcare Career Fair at Crystal Lake South. Each of these events showcased the incredible work that has been invested into connecting our students with community partners and organizations that provide unique opportunities and experiences to help students discover their areas of passion and purpose. I wanna thank the many members of our team that made these nights or these events possible, including our director, Justin Diebolt, our Career Experiences Coordinator, Veronica Gutzmer, our industry, careers, and wellness division leaders, as well as our college and career advisors at each building. I also wanted to mention that the first week of February was National School Counseling Week. The theme this year from the American School Counselor Association was standards-based, students-focused, or student-focused. I believe that is an accurate theme to represent our District 155 counselors and the work they do with families and students. And I can't stress enough the importance of our counselors and the integral role they play in the development of our students socially, emotionally, and academically. So I just wanted to express a thank you to all of our D-155 counselors. Finally, on to some of the work that we've been doing with our board here tonight. Prior to this meeting, we held a one-hour public operations committee focused on one main area of campus safety. So to summarize, Justin Diebolt presented his process for reviewing our district safety and protocols 
in collaboration with our deans and SROs this year. Through his review process, Justin and the team implemented changes that we also shared with the board. Some of these were as big as the new Bluepoint alert system installation, while other changes were smaller, such as building maps, signage, and door access. We concluded the conversation discussing the ways we hire, train, and retain our campus safety security guards, and the board provided us direction as we look to improve the role our security guards have in our buildings. That concludes my report. Thank you all for the support. Thank you. Now, board, um, through the uh, report here, we have the approval of the December 23, 23, 2023 graduates, and you'll see that in your documentation here. May we please have a motion to approve the December 2023 graduates as presented here and in the posted board packet? So moved. Second. First from Amy, second from Stephanie. Can I get a roll call, please? Mrs. Pavoris, Mr. Seacrest? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mrs. Blazier? Yes. Mr. Kiefer? Yes. Mr. Ludwig? Yep. Mrs. Macro? Yes. And just for those who weren't able to see this, there were 89 total graduates uh, in this, uh, 2023, December. Okay, uh, we're moving on to agenda nine, item 11, old business and committee reports. Are there any committee reports at this time? Hearing none, we will move on to new business. Any new business from the board to be brought up? Hearing none, moving on to matters to be brought up to the board by the board. None there. Uh, I'm going to ask to a motion to adjourn and we need a motion to adjourn. So who's up for that? Dave's the first, who wants second? I'll second. Amy is second, congratulations, Amy. Can I get a roll call, Mary Jo? Mr. Let's do this well. Dave? Dave, do you wanna go? Yeah, he wants to stay. <laughs> Dave said yes. I did, I did, okay. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mrs. Blazier? Yes. Mr. Kiefer? Yes. Mr. Ludwig? Yep. Mrs. Macro? Yes. Mrs. Pavoris? And I was just substituting for Nicole, so if you didn't like how I did it, Nicole will be back next month. Thank you very much. Thank you.